Well, congratulations, Adam, and, and welcome to TIFF and bringing this amazing movie. And it must be kind of a, an amazing moment for you, I would think. Thank you so much. It's been a little bit of a whirlwind, but, you know, very fortunate to have a chance to show the film to so many great festival audiences. Yeah, and people who, you know, really appreciate it and they want to watch it here, that's for sure, you know? There's nothing quite like coming to a festival like Toronto or Sundance where people are coming, to, you know, they're there to see the movies and they're just so excited about it, you yeah, know? Yeah. You don't really get that, uh, you know, in, at your average movie theater, um, you know, on your average weekend. Yeah. They, they paid, you know, $15 for the ticket and that movie better damn well be great. That's for sure. Plus not including what they paid for the babysitter and all the other exactly. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So no, for sure. You've got total film fans here. And you know, I want to I start with you because I, this started kind of emanated from a book. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit how you connected with that book and then what kind of drew you, you know, thinking, well, this is going to make a great movie. Sure. So uh, Amy Koppelman wrote the book, I Smile Back, about 10 years ago. Uh, about five years after that, she heard Sarah Silverman on Howard Stern's radio program and had the idea that to cast her in, in the film. And she wrote the 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 she adapted the in the book into a screenplay with her co-writer Paige Dillon. Mm -hmm. And then about four years after that, I was meeting with Brian Koppelman, who's one of the producers, and he shared the screenplay with me. And he said, you know, by the way, Sarah Silverman is attached to this. And I said, in a drama. And he said, yeah. And I was immediately intrigued by that. Uh, you know, Sarah is just a fearless performer and. There is so much hilarity, but also some darkness in her comedy, and I just had this feeling that someone so talented um, would be able to do it. So I read the script, and I was just incredibly moved by it. I thought it was a profoundly human story, uh, a tragic story, something that uh, affects everyone either directly or indirectly through a friend or a family member um, who could be struggling with mental illness and addiction. Yeah. And it's just not told very often, and I, I, I just jumped on it. I, I immediately read the script and then the novel and then um, met with Brian again and was able to thankfully start the process of convincing the team that uh, uh, I should be the director. And, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, you probably do by now, but um, years ago, Sarah Silverman came to Toronto in a small film called Take This Waltz, sure. directed by Sarah Pauly. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was the first time I'd ever seen Sarah do a dramatic, anything dramatic, mm -hmm. and I had the same, like, wow, you know, Sarah's, like, amazing in this. She has some amazing potential yeah. to, to really, you know, flesh out her dramatic side. And I had a really great, long interview with her. I mean, when you can sit down with Sarah Silverman for 20 minutes, that's like sure. a gift. You mm -hmm. know, and my question is always this: Why do really funny people make mm -hmm. such gr great dramatic actors? Well, some do. Most um, of them, I think yeah, they do. Yeah, you know? a, a lot yeah. haven't tried. Yeah. Know, they're focused on on what they're doing. Yeah. But to me, there were really three things that uh, that you know made me convinced me that Sarah was going to be great in this role. The first is her autobiography. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah has written and has been very vocal about her own struggles with depression and her own struggles with psychopharmacology. And from a directing standpoint, if an actor, if you know, and very often you won't know, but if you know that, a, that a, 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 an actor has relatable personal experience to the role, then that is you know, that's like half the battle. You know that they'll be able, they have something to draw from. Uh, secondly, I, I rewatched a bunch of Sarah's stuff and, and uh, you know, in particular, her role in, um, it's a small role, but in School of Rock, mm -hmm. she's not playing Sarah Silverman. Like, she's, she's a young actress playing a specific character. And so I'm watching this and I'm saying, oh, you know, this is not the comedic persona that we know as Sarah. Um, that, you know, this is something very specific being done on the acting side. And then I also watched the Graham Norton show and uh, Sarah was on with a couple of other people, and of course one of the aspects of that show is that they drink during the program. It's like a late night show in, in the UK. And, uh, and one of the guests gets really drunk, and Sarah was just very motherly towards him and gracious. And it was like an off-the-cuff moment that showed this side of her that was something that I wanted to show in the film. Yeah. I didn't really answer your question, but, no, it, you know, it's I, okay. I do believe but that it, it a lot of But it does cover some really have, dark stuff, I would think, you know? Yeah. yeah. In, yeah. in their in their personal lives yeah. or whatever I mean, it is, they've a lot of comedians have, uh, you know, lived through some very difficult things and are using comedy to um, express that. Yeah, and uh, and you know, Sarah would be the first one to say, and she said in a lot of interviews that we did together, you know, that that she's surrounded by a lot of addiction in the comedy world. Mm -hmm. So um, there's there's 
you know, sort of that darkness too. Yeah, and and it, you know, as a viewer, you're you're watching this movie and an audience goer, and you're like, wow, so frustrating to watch this character because outwardly she has it all. She's a great yeah. husband, amazing kids, beautiful home, blah, blah, blah. And then what she does to her life, she just can't help it. Sure. And it is so frustrating. Like, mm -hmm. did you end up having to do any research at all, like on just on people who kind of are living these this kind of life? Or did you just go by script? Um, uh, you know, getting ready to make a film is, uh, you know, a, a very uh, is when you're getting ready to make a film, you you are you know looking for all kinds of uh, things to help you make the film, mm -hmm. um, from visual references to yes, research. Um, yes, there was some a, a lot of research that I did, uh, but you know one of the things that you're that you're saying is is to me the to me one of the things that's fascinating about the story, which is this idea of the the mystery of mental illness mm -hmm. and the mystery of addiction and how how much of a beast it can be to wrestle with. And Lainey is a character who, as you mentioned, has it all. You know, she has financial support, she has a loving husband, she has two great kids, and she has, uh, you know, a support team in the medical community to, to try and help her through these problem, problems. But even with that, and even with knowing, you know, where her problems stem from, it's not enough to uh, change her fate. Yeah. And you can imagine what it must be like for people who don't have that support. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It was. It's heartbreaking. You know. And as you say, she's she is fearless. Where she went in this film is mind-boggling. Wow. Thank uh, you. Honest to God, like her performance is. I, I, she will get an Oscar nomination. There's no question. You she, she told me. Yeah, I promise. Because if she doesn't, I owe her a thousand dollars. So oh, no. yeah, and I don't have a thousand bucks. So Sarah, you have it. I don't. So seriously, no. But I, I was very honest with her. I said, I always have these gut reactions at TIFF. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm always right, always. And wow. I think for sure, people are going to stand up and take notice. Like when you were standing behind that, can you know, just watching her mm -hmm. do some of the stuff that she does in this, like, mm -hmm. you must have been completely blown away, I would think. Yeah. Uh, you know, making the film was incredibly challenging, very low budget, mm. small independent film, 20 days of shooting in New York and uh, in and around New York City. And, you know, every day really felt like survival in a way um, because we had so little time and so little resources. We just like had to get, you know, the, the important dramatic moment of the scene and then we had to move on. Mm. So there really wasn't a lot of time to reflect. <laughs> However, I can say that uh, while we were shooting the movie, but I can say that you know there were m absolutely moments every day, you know, behind the monitor or you know sit sitting sometimes uh, sitting by the lens of the camera and just seeing what Sarah was doing and just having this over overwhelming feeling of inspiration that this was you know that we were doing justice to the material that um, you know everyone cared so deeply about Amy's book. Do you have time for a story? I'll tell you a story. Uh, sure, go for it. I would love to hear it. So one of the uh, there's a one of the things because Sarah was so great. One of the things that I planned in the design of the movie was to do a lot of long take shooting mm -hmm. um, because I just wanted to show her acting, you know, without any cuts. So and there's a very um, uh, you know complex dramatic moment in the movie um, in the first act where she is using at night and she walks through her. Uh, kids' rooms yep. and, and, and watches her kids while they sleep. And the whole thing is done in one take. And, and when we were shooting, the, uh, uh, you know, we were running out of time. We had about an hour and a half left. And on the shot list, there were seven shots, seven or eight shots for that scene. And that's not enough time to do it. So the AD came to me and said, you know, we have to do something. So the cinematographer and I walked through the space and, and, we, and we designed to do it in what we would call a one -er one shot. And uh, needless to say, the AD comes to us and says, so you made it one shot, but you made it one incredibly complex shot that we also don't have time to do. And the cinematographer, Eric, and I looked at each other and we're like, yeah, sorry. And she's like, all right. And it really was like a moment where the crew just like bonded together. And we were like, all right, guys, this is what we're going to do. And they ran and they're running around, setting up the lights, Sarah and I doing the blocking. And all of a sudden, you know, it's time to shoot. And we have like 20 minutes left in the day. Yeah. And um, we roll the camera. I say action. 
Sarah starts walking down the hallway and the camera, her fo the camera following her the whole way in about a two minute shot. Mm -hmm. And after we went through it, I remember everyone standing by the monitor and just amazed at what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I said, cut, and everyone clapped. Mm -hmm. It was like a very moving moment on set that, you know, everyone felt like we had banded together and, and you know, maybe, maybe done something special. It was very poignant you know, to watch that, especially being a mom, that really, that, that actually really touched it's me more than anything. a terrifying moment. Yeah, really terrifying. Oh my gosh. So, and thanks for casting two of my favorite actors too, by the way, Josh Charles and Tom Sadowski. Oh my goodness, it was like a treat for me to watch this movie. <laughs> My thanks. favorites. Uh, thanks for them for <laughs> you know, uh, you know, saying yes. I mean, one of the one of the wonderful things about this movie, amidst many wonderful things, was that we got our dream cast: mm -hmm. um, Josh Charles, Tommy Sadowski, Chris Sarandon, uh, two amazing kids. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Mia Barron yeah. playing Tommy Sadowski's wife, and uh, you know, one of the cool things is that no, we found ourselves in this. This never happens, but no one said no to us. Like, these are the people that we shared the script with, and these people all said yes. There wasn't that process of, let's submit to this person, they said no. Let's submit to this person, and they said no. It just, it just landed with the right people at the right time. Now, having gotten to know Sarah so well, mm -hmm. what kind of future do you see for her? Sarah can do whatever she wants, you know? And, and, I, and, I, don't, and I don't mean that in terms of the you know what the opportunities she's afforded herself. I mean that in terms of her uh, her talent and her ability. She really can do anything. Yeah. So and I suspect she will. She you know she's very uh, you know very open about not having a plan. She's very organic. You know things come to her, and if she sparks to it, she'll do it. So I suspect we'll see some really hilarious things, yeah. but. I hope this movie opens some doors for her in some dramatic areas too. Oh, I think it will, 100%. You've done an outstanding job with this. Congratulations.